Hello, fellow pen lovers and stationery enthusiasts. It's Christy here, Snarky Wordsworth over on Instagram and Reddit. And today I have a very special unboxing for everyone out there. So the pen inside this box is actually a replacement pen for one that I lost probably a little over 10 years ago. That pen had been a gift. It was really kind of my lucky pen. I used it every day since college, uh, which had been in the early 2000s. Um, and I absolutely adored that pen. Long story short, I made the mistake at a previous job, not the job I have now, but at a previous job of letting someone just snag it off of my desk to just borrow it for a moment and then never got it back. Uh, I was pretty devastated at the time. And for a long while, I just couldn't even handle the thought of replacing it. I thought, you know, it's gone. It's just, it would never be the same. And then a couple of years ago, I started thinking, maybe I do want something that will at least remind me of this pen that had meant so much for so long. Now I've been kind of in the fountain pen hobby for a really long while, a couple of decades now, and I still don't really know a whole lot about vintage pens. I had just happened to like this pen because of who it belonged to. And, you know, uh, it had that kind of sentimental value, but I, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you the first thing about how to go about picking out a vintage pen or, you know, how to tell what's legitimate and real and what's a fake or any of those things. Um, and, you know, I went on the internet and was looking around, but I was like, I still have no clue what I'm actually doing. Uh, and then I stumbled across, uh, Paul Irano's pen page and he had so much stuff on there and had, it was so full of information and, you know, on a whim, I emailed him and was asking some questions and he really helped me out and was able to find, uh, something that would really come quite close to, uh, being at the very least a good sentimental match. So that is what is inside this box. Um, so hopefully when I open it, I don't get emotional or anything. Uh, but, uh, I am really excited to see this inside and I haven't seen anything like it in a very, very long time. Uh, so hopefully you will all enjoy and apologies in advance for the long windedness of this whole, uh, opening spiel, but I just kind of wanted to explain where I was coming from and what this pen actually meant and, uh, how it was kind of a very different kind of unboxing for me. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and open up the package. So here it is. So this is a Parker 51 in the cocoa colorway. And to be perfectly honest, I wasn't sure if it was a buckskin or a cocoa that I originally had. Um, I, I don't know that I've ever had any photographs of it or anything, but on first glance, this does look very similar to what I did have. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, and it's in quite good condition. I think it's actually probably in better condition than the pen that I had. Um, my pen was like dinged like crazy and had definitely lived a very full life, but I hope you can see. So the color is really this warm sort of like mocha y cafe latte kind of shade. And I don't know, when I was a kid, I just remember seeing it on the desk and being like really drawn to it. I loved the gold with that sort of like creamy chocolatey color. And I just thought it was really pretty and I just wanted to use it. And the version that I had was really, really smooth and just was a great all around pen. So 
the finial and that's terrible sorry about that <laughs> like I said this is my first time seeing it so I'm sort of like a little bit shakier than I would normally be but I don't really see any scratches or anything on the finial and like the cap itself no dings as far as I can see and yeah no I it looks great um but let's go ahead and if this is like my other one it should be an aerometric yep so I should have said this ages ago but this is a Parker 51 Demi which is a slightly smaller version than the standard that they have and just for me I have smaller hands uh I figured that the Demi would fit a little bit better I'm pretty sure that my dad had the standard sized uh but you know that part wasn't like a huge make it or break it kind of thing for me and um yeah even as I hold it it definitely feels like it's a good size for my hands so there's that um it is just a really really lovely comfortable pen um I want to go ahead and ink this guy up and then I'll do a little bit of a writing sample but I'm really really very happy with this um, and I'll probably do a more in-depth like deep dive into Parker at some point because I am really intrigued by the history of the company and everything like that but I did just want to open this one up and sort of let you guys kind of see what it looks like and you know to give you a little bit of background about what this pen uh, sort of represents for me and uh, I'm gonna go and get this guy inked up okay I'll be right back okay I am back and I have inked this up um, I really am so very very pleased uh, with this pen uh, I was able to kind of take a slightly closer look at some of the different markings so the uh, notations on the back which are very hard to see because of the striations in the cap uh, just say made in the USA uh, and it's the it is the 12 karat gold filled cap which is what I had asked for I think that this is pretty much what I had had before um, as far as the kind of cap goes and then the markings on the barrel are even more faint but I think and I could be wrong but on cursory look online I think this pen was um, maybe a 48 I'm not I'm honestly not positive that part is a little I'm a little bit more hazy on as far as how to really uh, figure that out but I will definitely um, look more into it so I can have more information for you uh, when I do go through and do a full um, more in-depth review of this pen so um, I filled up this Parker 51 uh, in cocoa with Ferris wheel presses oyster hour I love this ink I think it's absolutely beautiful with some gorgeous shading and I do think it's gonna work really nicely with this cocoa color um, I'm pretty certain that this is a fine nib and uh, I think it will still look quite nice with this sort of size so let's go ahead and see how it writes. Okay, so it does have a nice smooth flow to it and you can kind of see what the line width looks like I do think that I'm right I do think that this is a fine and not an extra fine um, and I really like the way that it looks and and um, I do really enjoy the way that it feels in the hand um, 
as I mentioned, this pen is definitely more of a sentimental replacement than anything else. And I'm really, really grateful to have it. Um, thank you so much to Paul Arano for helping me track this down and for um, getting me all squared away with everything that I needed for it. Uh, and I, I do think that this is going to be a nice little pen that I add to my collection that I write with every once in a while when I'm feeling kind of sentimental about things. Um, and hopefully this was at least a little bit interesting or informative for all of you out there. Um, if you stuck with me through this entire video, I very much appreciate you. If it was interesting, entertaining, or informative, please do consider hitting that like or the subscribe button. Uh, and if you have any questions, I will certainly do my best to get answers for you. Like I said, I'm 100% not a vintage pen uh, expert in any way, shape, or form. I am the laymanist of laymen when it comes to vintage uh, pens. I just, I, I, I happen to really like this one and the handful of others that I have in my collection. And you know, I just, there's enjoyment in, um, being able to write with something that is, you know, from a very, very different time or connected to different people for me anyway. Anyway, once again, thank you so much for joining me and hopefully I will see you next time. Bye-bye.